Um, as we tape this, it's right before the XPC semis, and uh, you know people are concerned with weights. So, so the the question popped into my head about about different weight classes and leverage. Now, obviously, I, I'm guessing Julia, you if you were to become a super heavyweight, that might be not be the ideal for you. Certainly how not should, attractive, but <laughs> how should someone determine as they progress, as they as they gain weight and gain leverage, what is that? correct point for them. Matt, let's start with you. Uh, what is it, Dave? You keep gaining weight until your deadlift goes backwards and then you... <laughs> take my answer, <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, I think it depends. It depends on the person, you know. In my case, I've got a very short torso and long arms and long legs. So for me, as I gain weight, I gain weight in my torso and it makes my... where I'm weakest, my bench, it makes my bench go up uh, a lot faster. But it also makes it... Um, much harder for me, you know, to deadlift. So I have to move my grip out, changes that a little bit harder. So um, I would say it, it depends on the person. You know, sometimes people have certain numbers in mind at, at a certain weight class, but uh, it depends on where they are in their competitive. If you're a new lifter, like if you haven't, this is your first meet, don't worry, just weigh what you weigh, go to the meet and, and lift. If Once you get a few meets under your belt and if you get down the road and things are starting to stick and you're not grossly overweight already, go ahead and add a little bit of weight and see what happens. And then you get as you get a little stronger and then when you get, again, too fat and your clothes don't fit, take some of the body fat off and see what happens. Um, but I think it just depends. Julia? I might not be the person to ask on this. I've only been in, well, I guess I've been in three weight classes. Um, I think it... I think individually the person has to know at, at that point in their training if they feel good. If, you're, if you gain weight or you lose weight and now you have aches and pains and issues that you didn't have before, you need to take that into consideration. It might be a good thing, it might be a bad thing, but I think that's just something that the person has to think about. Um, if I try to you know, cut down a weight class and now my shoulders are aching all the time, probably not going to be beneficial for my training. So I think that's one thing that needs to be taken into consideration. Matt touched on the other one. If you're just starting off with, I wouldn't worry about weight classes. Chances are you just need to get stronger. So get stronger, continue to put on muscle, and go from there. Um, for myself, I, it was just a matter of, um, you know, I started in 32s. I did a couple meets, 40-ish, um, 40, 40 so 48s. Um, but my weight just kind of stabilized around 130, and... You know, we decided to, to, at where I'm at now and the advanced, you know, level that I'm at now to try to hit some numbers at 23. So that's kind of uh, was a challenge. You know, I think when you get to high levels like this, you know, we can do a couple different things in a couple different weight classes and try to hit records and try to hit those numbers. Um, but as far as what's optimal for, you know, different, different body types, I think you, like Matt said, you kind of got to figure out where those issues are in which lifts and where you're willing to give up a couple pounds here to gain 50 more pounds in, in another lift. So, I mean, something's going to give. Very few of us, I think, are built all the way around to have, you know, three incredible lifts. You know, at some point, something's got to give, but I don't know. I, I did my first meet in December of 2000. I weighed 214. I weighed in today at 217. You know, explain that. Um, I've been the same weight the entire time. I have made a couple of meets at 198, but I literally have never competed over 220. Um, I, honestly, I think um, you go, you, you do your first meet, you train, your body will tell you where it wants to be. Mm -hmm. When this guy first came to train with me, he was in the 220s with me. Mm -hmm. You know, he's probably 280 today, you know? So, you know, he, he got bigger, you know, he got a lot bigger. I'm still 220, you know? <laughs> and um, so, I. Just train, man, and, and be comfortable and have fun and let your body do, yeah, let it go where it wants to go. Brian, why did you make that decision to climb? <laughs> well, I, really, again, I don't think he made the decision. Again, this is going to be a complicated, a compl you know, kind of like with the, the last question of Dave, I, I, I could go like 20 different directions with this, so I'm going to try to stay on point, all right? There's a lot of factors here. Number one, I mean, are you worried about first and foremost your total? Or number, number two, your health. With, you know, that, those are two factors there too. Um, main factors, you know, performance versus health. Now, in, in, in my case, my body kept growing. Each time I cut weight, 
at first the first time I did uh, meet 2003 March uh, March 15 2003 I didn't cut any weight weighted in night uh, 219 next meet I did 233 cut down to 220 and so on and pretty soon the last time I tried to cut to 220 was a you know a huge failure you know Dave, Dave was there he saw me warming up and I got smashed with my warm-ups and I was done for the day but I cut from 255 down to 224 and that was all I had in me and my body was trying to tell me something you know I'm not a really tall guy but I'm taller than the average 220 or I'm 510 and after a while my body was saying keep let yourself grow 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 even though I had some success I probably wasted three meats in that process of that, that you know I had a goose egg for while I was 220 the same thing slowly started to happen at 242 and I got you know 250 255 260 and then and then 275 and it was too much so pretty much I just listened to my body after a while I didn't want to starve it anymore I didn't want you know injuries you know when, when I was at my leanest I seemed to get injured the most you know that that seems weird but at the same time you got to at the end of the day you got to decide okay do I want to look good or do I, do I want my performance to uh, you know to trump everything and some people can have the, be the best of both worlds, like Matt Kroc looked great when he's powerlifting. Jeremy Frey is really lean right now. You know, and those guys, you know, Jeremy worked on it with diet, but Matt's naturally a lean guy. He eats good and he's still strong. But see me, I, I'd have to make that choice. I'm now 280, do I have a six pack and you know, uh, uh, you know a, a good physique? I'm not gonna be competing in men's physique anytime soon, but my lifts are up. You know, progressively each time I went up, um, my totals went up from the 2375 at 220 the 2570 at 242 to 2730 at 275 and that's what i think you have to look at number one you need to look at health you know you know things are going to get out of whack when you get heavier and bigger but again you, you got to understand that but you don't want to be uh, on you know on your deathbed just because you want to be heavier and you want your total to be up but with that said you want to be stronger and you want to progress and if you hold your weight back too much, it's going to lead to injuries and, you know, stack, you know, you're going to get stagnant. But listen to your body. Again, like I said about the training, listen to your body and, and it'll tell you what it wants to do. You know, Adam wants, his body wants to be a 220. Uh, he's eaten a lot. He's tried different things and he's never gotten any heavier than 225, 230. And I think that's my rule of thumb. You know, unless you're going for a world record or you, you know, you're, you're trying to, you know, really make a weight class for a big meet. I wouldn't cut any more than 10 or 12 pounds, regardless of your weight class, you know. You can get into percents and all that stuff, that's fine, but you know, I wouldn't cut more than something that's going to really put you out and inconvenience you um, and, 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 and possibly hurt your, your performance. But again, listen to your body and it'll, it'll tell you, you know, and, you know, again, it could, you get too heavy and your deadlift starts going down, that's something to look at too, you know, but a lot of people as they went up, their deadlifts, you know, went up. So there, there's a bunch of different ways you can look at that. Dave, I think you, as Brian touched on, you got you got to make a decision. Is this going to be, you know, a hobby that you compete at, or is it going to be a sport you want to excel at? If it's a if it's a hobby that you're going to compete at, then you want to put your health first. the The moment that you make a, a conscious decision that it's going to be a sport you want to excel at, in any sport, not powerlifting, but any sport, health is going to always end up taking the back seat. You know, it's just, it's the nature of sport. It's the nature of the competitive aspect of sport and so forth. So with that being said, dealing with body weight and weight classes, there's, there's, there's two sides of the coin. I've seen a lot of lifters, a lot of class one and below lifters stagnant and make no progress whatsoever because they had to stay in a certain weight class. You know, you get the guy that's 6'2 that has to be in the 198 class and he goes absolutely nowhere, just over and over and over and over. But mentally, he can't go 220 because he's not strong enough. He has to stay in the 198 because that's where he's going to total class one masters or whatever it's going to be. Meanwhile, if he just put on the fucking weight, he probably total his elite and his leverages would come into play and, you know, he would get that bigger total. As far as structure and how much somebody should weigh, I think there's a lot of clues out there, and that is look at the competitive lifters that are out there now who are an elite or a pro level in whatever federation or category you want. You know, raw, whatever, there's eight million categories. 
but just kind of look across the board and you know how many 181ers do you see that are 62 you know just kind of find the physique that represents you know your height your bone structure and then look and see where most of the people fall and that's going to be a good idea you know for anybody that's close to six foot you're going to be 275 or more you don't see a whole lot of six foot guys you know in the 181 198s that's if you want it to excel as it being a competitive sport if you just want to compete as a hobby compete as the 198 um, you don't want to cut weight I don't think anybody needs to cut weight for any meat whatsoever unless they are going for something extremely important like an elite total or they're competing for money or it's a pro thing it's just it's too much of a risk for the time that you put into the training these guys will put 16 12 16 20 weeks into training for a meet and they're a, a novice lifter but then they go and they cut 15 pounds and they screw up the whole training cycle where it just go lift fucking at 205 and lift in the 220s you don't have to be 198 you know i got that scale of shit suck good great you're not even good you know you're just going to get a suck total so who cares if it's at the 198 or the 220 it's still a novice total let's get the prs that's the most important thing let's get some records in the book for yourself worry about that other stuff later it matters for these guys that are competing in the pro meets what weight class they're going to be in because there's coefficients and there's all kinds of other things that come into play that's a whole other dynamic of the sport that a novice shouldn't even be concerned with you know they should be going to compete to break their own records and and, and have a good time you know once they get to the elite level then they can start looking at things like that years ago as matt jokingly said at the beginning i used to tell people just keep gaining weight you know, as long as you keep, keep getting stronger, just keep gaining weight. You know, go up, go up, go up, go up. That's what I was always told. Then when you quit, when you quit making progress, drop a weight class. Well, that's great advice until after, you know, six years of everybody telling everybody this. And I'm not saying I came up with it. It's probably Louie and many other coaches who came up with it. We all start looking around and you got all these little five, six, 275 pound bloated pigs, you know, who are squatting 450 in meats. And you're thinking, this shit ain't right. You know, <laughs> they're out of shape, they're unconditioned, their conditioning is not on par, but they're doing what they were told. You know, just keep gaining weight as you get stronger. So there, there's the other end of that, too. If you start to become a big, fat, bloated blowfish, maybe you need to reevaluate what weight class you're in and bring it down a little bit just for the health reasons as well. As I did state, you know, a competitive athlete, the health is gonna be affected, but you don't want it to be affected to the point where you're gonna have a heart attack just training in the gym. Mm -hmm. 